Hello and welcome to today's YouTube episode. On today's sewing adventure, I'm going to be talking through my most recent makes, so let's get started. So I thought I would start today's YouTube episode by sharing my most recent make. I made this one just at the weekend and I'm wearing it. So this is the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo dress and it is in this lovely multicolored gingham fabric that I've had in my stash for about two years. And I made this one up at the weekend and I can't believe I didn't make it earlier because I actually really, really love it. And I have worn it since I've made it. So I wore it the next day. I went to central London to an art gallery and I wore it there. So that was really lovely. So it's good to get it in the wardrobe and then get it into rotation straight away. And I can see that I'm going to be wearing this one an awful lot over the next month or so. Now the indigo pattern is a really great pattern. I did not alter the bodice at all, but what I did do was I added some width to the sleeves. So it's slightly puffier than usual, um, nothing too much. And I also added some width to the sleeves as well. And then I added the elastic around the cuffs because I think that I really like that look. I also added about 10 centimeters to the width of the skirt at the top and then in the same shape going to the bottom and I also added some length to the skirt so you should have been able to see that in the photos on the screen so it is quite long it is a really good dress for this time of year where things are just starting to warm up a little bit it's not too cold it was lovely to wear it with just a coat over it and a scarf and a hat it was perfect so I'm looking forward to wearing this one a lot more over the next few weeks, maybe a month or so, and then next year as well. So that was the first make that I'm sharing with you today. Now the next make that I'm sharing with you today is this one. This is the Friday Pattern Company Pogo Nip Pullover, and it is made in this gorgeous Liberty Ripstop fabric that I got from the new craft house. So this is part of the Pogo Nip party that has been organized by the wonderful Christine of Gemini Stitches and I have also posted this one on my Instagram as well as part of the Pogo Nip party. Now I really love this one. I've just added the poppers to the collar stand at the top. I will show you what I did. Um, so I put in the welt pockets. So you should be able to see there, I've got my hand in the pocket, so I've got lovely welt pockets. Because the pattern's so busy, they're actually really hard to spot. I've got the poppies at the top, and I decided to make this one with French seams. So you should be able to see that. So it's fully French seamed throughout, and also it is lined on the inside as well. So really happy with how it looks. I use this Becky Street seamstress label. It's on the inside that counts, so that's a really sweet one. And um, I did make it with a pocket, but because this jacket, this fabric kind of packs down really, really small, I actually altered the size of the pocket. So I can imagine that using this one in summertime and having it as kind of a lightweight, rainproof pullover jacket and it actually packs down to be that size. So that's super practical. If you think, like if I was going on holiday or something like that, I could just put that one um, and it's packed down, like pack it away, and it's so small that it would fit almost every, anywhere. So I'm super pleased with that one. I also said that I'd be making my dog Patsy a matching coat, and I did have enough fabric to make that one. Her one is in the wash though because it got really muddy at the park, as dog coats do, so I can't show it to you now. But there are photos of me and Patsy matching on the screen, or there should have been, and also a photo of her wearing her little coat on her own as well. So I'm really pleased with that one. I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of that in the spring, and also that is part of the pogo knit party as well. So the third make that I wanted to share with you today is this. This is the Matchy Matchy Sewing Company Recess Play Pads. And my last YouTube, YouTube episode was a clip 
about how I made these scalloped pockets. So if you haven't looked at that one, then go and check that one out. Um, I really enjoyed filming that one. It was lots of fun and it takes you through the process of how to create the scalloped effect on the pockets. I also added one patch pocket to the back and I just really love these. Should be able to see pictures of them. I love the fit of them. I've shortened them a bit shorter than I usually would for the spring time. Um, and it's a bit cold still at the moment, but I can't wait to start wearing these when it warms up even more. And they're just super comfy and super cozy. They do have an elasticated waist, which makes them really comfortable as well. So really pleased with how these ones have turned out. And the Matchy Matchy Reese's Play Pants is actually a really good pattern for colour blocking and scrap busting and things like that as well. So super pleased with this, this make and this is the third make that I'm sharing with you today. Now the fourth make I'm sharing with you is this. This is the True Bias Nico Top and it is made in this really lovely double brushed viscose fabric that I got from Bornella Fabrics. It's got this really nice ribbed pattern. I've worn this one a lot as well under pinafore dresses and just uh, with jeans tucked in. Um, I have got a lot of wear out of this one and it's so nice and cozy and warm and it actually does keep me really warm. So I'm super pleased I've got that one. I do also have the black version fabric of this to make up another one but I'm thinking now I might keep that till next winter because I have a black Nico top already so maybe I'll keep that one for then but yeah I've got a lot of wear out of this and this has been a really great addition to my wardrobe. Now make number five is this. Now this is the Merchant and Mills The Margo dress and I love this dress, you should be able to see photos of it on the screen. It is really long, it is really beautiful, it's super comfortable to wear. It has these lovely pockets which I actually did in black and white to gingham. Um, the inside of the pockets, it's got a bib pocket and it's also got pockets, patch pockets on the back as well. Oh, there's a bit of fluff. Right, so this one is made out of a needle cord. I thought well, I did buy black, but it is actually navy, but that's fine because it is really lovely and I've had quite a lot of compliments about the colour of this one as well. So, it's a dark colour, so it is, it, it is what I wanted. So, I've been wearing this one quite a lot too and I've been really enjoying it. I bought off Etsy these lovely ceramic buttons as well, which I think really add to it. I looked through a lot of buttons from my stash, but I couldn't find anything that I thought matched. But I think that these really suit the style of the dress and the fabric really nicely. So I'm pleased that I went for them. So that is the Margot pattern from Merchant and Mills. And it has been great having that one recently added to my wardrobe. I have worn it quite a lot. Now, the next thing I'm going to share with you is this. This is the ginger jeans, the closet core ginger jeans. And I did also do a whole YouTube episode on how I made these, particularly the fly construction of these. So, and the waistband construction as well. I went into detail with that. So I'm super pleased with these. Um, to be honest, I haven't actually worn them yet. Um, I'm waiting, I think, for spring because these are kind of more uh, a lighter weight denim than I'm used to and I think that these would be better for when it warms up a little bit. I've been wearing my um, heavier jeans um, recently. So these are really lovely. I do really like them. It is a recent make. I thought I would share it with you all the same. Um, I put a tag on the back here, Kylie, in the machine tag that says you can't buy this and then on the inside I've got the little rosy cheeks be strong be happy be you tag and I was really pleased with how these ones turned out I, I enjoyed the process and if you want to you can see how I made these on a YouTube clip I'll put a link to that one in the descriptions box below so that is the another make that I'm sharing with you today 
Now, just quickly, I thought I would share this. Now, I know I've shared the Emmy Coat, Paper Cut Patterns Emmy Coat with you before. That is not a new make, but I made this fake fur collar, and that was a new make. So, I made the fur collar, and I've actually been wearing the jacket with that quite a lot. Obviously, if, if it's raining or if it's really cold, then I do put the hood on because it stops my stops me from, my head from getting rained on and it keeps me a little bit warmer. But I have been wearing this um, fake co fur collar quite a lot and that has been a really good addition for the coat too. So I thought I would share that because although the coat's not a new make, <laughs> the collar is and it has actually been a really lovely addition. So anyone who's thinking of making the Emmy coat, I have actually made the hood, the funnel collar and now this collar which is just like the normal collar and it's really really a good thing to have a choice of collars because it means that you can kind of mix and match it with what you're wearing and also depending on the weather too so if you are thinking of making the emmy jacket then that is a really good kind of um thing to consider is that you can um obviously with these poppers i can just pop this collar off and then, you know, I wouldn't even have to have a collar or a hood. I could just have it on its own. But that's a really good thing to consider if you are thinking of making this pattern. But I've really enjoyed wearing this lovely fake fur collar. Now, the last thing I'm going to share with you today is this. It is... Now, this has been... I've been working on this since August last year. So this one has taken me quite a while. And I have spoken about it on my YouTube channel before. So if you've watched a few of my episodes, then you might be familiar with this one. This one is one of my Aurifil thread challenges. So this was the February challenge. The February challenge was Upcycle. So what I did was I bought this denim jacket. I didn't make the denim jacket. I bought it on eBay and... Everywhere you see a patch was a great big hole um, with frayed kind of denim strands running through it. So I'll pop a picture of that up so you can see what it looked like before. And what I did was I used these lovely Liberty Cottons, uh, a combination of four different types, and I patched, I did English paper piecing, and I patched every single hole up. And what I really like about this is I've used the different size um, pieces. So I bought, um, when I bought the, I bought the hex skins as templates and I bought a range of different sizes. So you can see that some of them are a bit bigger, some of them are smaller. These are the smallest ones down here, just those two. But that is what I did. And what I also did as well, because obviously the patches had to be patched in the, in the middle, I kind of made a feature of that too. So I used denim offcuts from a project from some jeans that I had made and I decided that I'd have like quite a contrast of colour and I used the Aurifil threads to do the zigzag around, this is a variated thread, I'll pop the um, details below, but basically every single patch has got that lovely um, contrast and I really like that it's got that contrast because I think it just kind of creates another dimension to the jackets but yes lots and lots of work in this one I did a lot of work on this over Christmas just sitting in front of the TV on those long dark nights um, just piecing um, English paper piecing and then when it was finished sewing it to the jacket so it's all hand sewn obviously apart from the actual patches themselves super pleased with how this one has turned out and just can't wait till spring basically to wear it because I do want to wear this and I can see myself wearing this one a lot. I also used the Kylie and the Machine upcycled and outstanding tag for obvious reasons and I'm just super pleased with how that's, that one has turned out. So that is the last make that I am sharing with you today. So that is it for today's YouTube episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. I have shared my most recent makes with you. So that's from January and February. So that is two months of makes. I know that there was quite a lot of things that I made, but it has been over two months and I have really enjoyed making each and every garment 
over those two months. One thing I am really looking forward to, as you can see that I've already started to add a little bit more colour um, with this make. And I'm really looking forward to adding more colour as we get into spring. Obviously this make is a bit more colourful and I do have some plans for some really lovely things coming up as we move into spring and summer. And I've got some really lovely fabrics in my stash, I've mentioned that before, and I can't wait to start sewing some of them up and making some items out of that as well. So thank you so much for watching today's episode, I really hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed filming this one. Please let me know what you thought in the comments box below. Maybe you had a favorite make from today or maybe it's inspired you to make something yourself from the things you saw today. Let me know, I love hearing from you. Also, if you could like this clip, I would really appreciate that. And if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, then that would be wonderful. I'm very close to 3000 subscribers, which is really mind blowing to me. So thank you so much if you have already subscribed and if you're thinking about doing it, then you can click the subscribe button. It is free and it means that you will be notified when I release my next clips. Thank you again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is for you, and I'll see you here again soon.